Here I have a image called builder.jpg, and we want to be able to display that on our HTML page. So let's learn how we do that. The first step is, of course, to open up our directory structure, and we want to place all images, as we learned in yesterday's episode, they should all be placed within the images folder. So I will do that now. Now I can close this out, return to my project, and you can see that it is in fact being referenced. So now let's reference that image. And I'm gonna hit enter a couple times and we'll paste it right here. We use an image by using the IMG for image element. Because there will never be text within an image, that doesn't make sense, just as we did with links and meta elements, we can self-close it. Let's see what this alone does though in the browser. I'm gonna come back, refresh, and we don't see anything at all. And that's because quite naturally, there is no reference here. So we have an empty image element. It should be noted though, this may not be the case in all browsers. You'll find that in versions of Internet Explorer, it'll display a nasty X, meaning could not find the image. So make sure that you aren't referencing empty images or images that do not exist. In this case, let's come back. We can reference an image, not by doing href, which you might expect by doing something called src. That's source. What is the source of this image? That's going to be equal to a value. And the source is going to be img forward slash builder. Now let's come back. And if I load the page, now we are referencing that image as we would hope. We need to do one more thing for this image though. It is a best practice, and you should always do this, provide alternate text for this image just in case the image is not available or images are turned off by whoever is browsing your website, they need to be able to have some feedback as to what this image represents. And I will simply say construction hat. And now if I load the page again, you're not gonna see anything. But if I were to turn off images, you would see a little tooltip that said construction hat. And that's really good for screen readers and things of that nature. Now we can also link to images that are stored on the web. This is common if you use something like Amazon storage, but there's another way you can do it. And it's important that we go over this. Here's an image on NetTouch. I'm gonna right click it or control click and choose copy image URL. Now, if I come back, I can link to an absolute URL by pasting that in. And if I come back, we can change the alternate text to Envato. And if I load the page, as you would expect, we are loading that image. So you might think that's really helpful. This is really a big no-no. And the reason is we can build a whole website by referencing images that are stored on NetTuts or any website. But the problem is whoever owns NetTuts, us in that case, have to pay the bandwidth for displaying images on your website. And that is not fair. This is what's referred to as hot linking. And it's a bad, bad practice. So please don't do it. If there is an image on the web that you want to use and you have permission to use it, right click, save image as. In this case, we're going to save it to learning images and we'll call it Envato. And now we can reference it locally like so, and we're not hot linking Envato.png. Come back, reload the page, and I am referencing it incorrectly. And that's because I forgot to include the folder name. Go into the images folder, then find it. And now we are getting it, but we are not hot linking and making somebody else pay for our bandwidth. The only thing I wanna caution you is again, if you're going to do this, you must make sure that you have permission to use images and it's not copyrighted. So whether that means emailing whoever owns the website and requesting it, or only using images that specifically allow you to redistribute them and use them any way you see fit. So again, to include an image, we use the image element, we specify a source that references where the image is stored, and then we specify alternate text for when images is turned off. In the next lesson, I'm gonna teach you about divs.